Welcome back to Steer Wrestling 101. And today I've got Josh Clark with me. And we've been, we want to come bring to you some stuff that we've been doing this winter. Josh and I have uh, had the luxury uh, to have a, the winter together and it's been great for us. I, I, I hope you agree with that, Josh. Uh, oh, 100%. And, and what we've been doing. And, and we've developed some stuff with the belt. Uh, and y'all have not seen this before. Something new. Uh, we've, used, we've showed you a little bit of stuff we do with the belt uh, behind the tractor. And uh, just a short history about the belt, uh, Ode Berry was, uh, we, he, he had given me the honor to help train him during the American, and, and it was quite an honor to do that. But he had had a shoulder injury right before, it, before he, he uh, came here. And so it kind of disabled him as far as his shoulder was concerned. And, and uh, this, this gave us an opportunity to train him from the waist down, which we do anyhow. And, uh, and so we want to kind of show you some of the stuff that we're going to do today with this that we've kind of added even since Oates, uh, you know, Oat came here. And so I think it's going to be great for you guys to see some of the stuff we're doing. Okay, if you noticed, uh, we've got to our bungee that we've, uh, and I, I'll, I'll give all the credit to Rob Pierce for building this bungee for us. Uh, Rob's our video. He's the guy behind the camera, but he's also developed a really good system using a bungee. And all we're trying to do here, guys, is create a feel. And uh, if we can recreate a feel for, for our guys, I don't care if you're on a, on a starter level or if you're on a pro level, it, it's a great thing and, and it's something you can work slow. If you notice, this is the stick. We've used this time and time again in our, in our training and we still do. I mean, it's, it's one of our biggest, uh, biggest things that we use in our bungee with our stick. But what we did is we just attached a rope to this. All this is, is and it's just a back girt off a, off a horse. Now, we're going to try to you know try to fancy it up a little bit later but hey for now this is what we use and it's just two ropes attached to the to the belt uh so go ahead josh if you will and get inside and every and what we like about this and i'll, I'll kind of go here what we like about this the most is that we're working totally from the waist down with this so we've got something that's pushing on our, over our back a steer will do that that's what they're doing and uh, kind of get down in your stance right there and I'm, I'm gonna take you right here and as he goes low what what's happening is this steer is pushing forward you see I'm kind of pushing him forward and then as he drives back and, and it comes over that the steer comes over and he's gonna get real light right there so we're gonna kind of work on just some of the stuff that we're doing the new stuff that that Josh and I've been working with and I want you to just kind of watch what we're doing here and I'm, I want to Josh just to kind of go through a workout with this and I'll kind of talk over while he's doing it okay let's just do that okay as you see Josh is going down right here and and here's here's the thing we don't want a whole lot of pressure on this on this bungee right now he's basically doing this with his own balance and that's the, and and with really fresh steers light steers stuff like that you every steer is not going to just really put a lot of pressure on you so what I want him to do is kind of creep creep back now and we call it just kind of walk back a little bit Josh just walk back just a little bit right there. Now he's putting a little more pressure on right there. He can do as much as he wants. Right here, he's got two bungees, which this is really tough. He's almost got them maxed out with our, we've got a, a protective cord here to keep those bungees from, from overextending. But he's kind of maxed out right there. Now watch how he can go up and down right here. Kind of go lower, lower, lower. And look, watch it. All right, now come forward, come forward, come forward. Yeah, come up, come up, come up. Now. All the way through there, he could be throwing steers, and that's that's the that's the whole premise to doing this. Uh, kind of tell them what you're feeling there, Josh, and, and how this works for you. So, so what I'm feeling, um, the tension on that bungee, and what I'm really trying to do is move my hips back, but more than anything, lower to the ground, and put more and more tension on that bungee. Um, and when I first started doing this, I had to get back to where I could max it out, and that strap was tight to kind of assist and help me out a little bit. Um, and the more I've done it, the repetition and the, and the muscle memory it's built in my legs and the more it's strengthened my balance, I've gotten now to where I can do it with quite a bit of slack in that rope, in the safety rope. Yes, yes. Or not, and rely Absolutely. more on my legs and not rely on the steer for my balance. Yeah, and that's, a, that's a huge because so many times, I mean, and it's what I call controlling the run. I mean, when you're controlling the run and the steer's not, and your body position is so that, the, that you're controlling that run, I mean, now you're dictating when everything happens instead of the steer, and that's huge. Uh, yeah. I mean, 
and and you know they talk about his sliding steers and all this stuff. He can get as much on the steer as he wants. I mean, he can he can take the slide out of steer. I mean, the lower he gets, and here's here's one of the things I want to show you. Show him. I want I want to take this, and and we're going to take a little time right here, okay, with you guys, because I want really by everybody watching this. I want you to understand what we're trying to do. All right, so go back down and kind of get in your stance. Now here's what, I'm gonna kind of hold his belt here, and here's what happens to when you tell somebody, say, hey, really put something on the steer. What they do is they start lifting right here. See how his, his, his behind came up? And look, he's giving up his legs right there. So, so basically, that's, that's the 98% the that's chasing the 2%, okay? It's what I call it. And, and that's even going to the nose, because what happens is when you do that and your hips go forward or they go up, then you give back. And we don't want that to happen. If we're that right here, and I'm just gonna show you kind of what I, I see here. If we're doing this and our hips come up, we're chasing the nose at that point. And we're trying to not do that. Because what we've done, we've, ta we've taken and we've slid these steers, we've put the work in, and we want to take and maximize that finish. And when I say maximize, we want to make those steers hit. Like when that steer hits, where is he supposed to hit, Josh? He's supposed to hit straight away. He's, he hits straight away. Now, they talk about, and we're going to talk about a little bit about clocking well. And, and Josh, he's heard me say this how many times? Thousands of times. Thousands. How are we going to clock more efficiently? And that's what we've worked on with, this, with the bungees, with the sticks, and everything that we do is try to work on that so that you clock well. I don't really care what it looks like. I could give a damn what it looks like. I really could. What I really want is to be efficient and make those steers hit hard. And what I want, to, I want those steers to, hit it, hit steers to finish flat, and I want them to hit one time. If we do that, the, the, the flagman is sitting here and he's going like this. He has to do this. If those steers have a shoulder roll or, they are, or they're coming all the way around here, trickling, that trickling effect where they turn their hips. Let me show you one other thing that I want to show right quick. Now, to go ahead and get in your stance again. Now, show me what happens in most cases, the other, the other thing. See what, it, what he just did? He turned his hip right here. And I know a, a ton of old bulldoggers that would tell you that's the way to do it, okay? And all I'll say to that is this, if you're doing that, we're going to beat you. You understand what I'm saying? And I, I don't mean that in a, I'm not being, uh, I, I'm not bragging. I'm not, this is not to say that there's this wrong. It's not wrong. You can still throw the steer down. But when you do that, I want to show you what you did with that steer. Turn your hips, go and turn your hips. Now look, you're going to trickle that steer around and I can't even get across this road, but you're going to be over here where that steer hits. Right because you gotta wait till the nose comes to you. We don't have to do that. Right. We're, now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go again, get back down there. Now, when he drives these hips back into me, there's where the force is. He's, he's driving the hips back, and I go to the nose, the steer's gonna hit, and he's gonna hit right here. Very efficient, and, and the other thing is, guys, there's less, there's less body movements. There's less things that can go wrong. There's less, uh, you, there's less for you to have to do. If I stay, le and look, all he, all he has to do now is just look down a pin, and when I say look down a pin, everybody says, well, you're supposed to look over your feet and all this stuff, and that, hey, that's fine for some, that's fine for some styles, that's okay. And look, there's nobody that's gonna tell you not to look down when you go to the nose more than I am. Right. I mean, we got our chin down and we're going to the nose. We're, that's exactly where I want you. But when we're sliding the steer, I want you to take that steer somewhere every time and a big guy like josh if he takes his steer and you, you can ask him i mean if you slid every steer that you ever ran on the other six six inches how much more efficient would you have been oh 100 percent more i mean that, i mean a lot probably 99.9 .9 percent of the time in my mind i want to slide steers a foot farther than they really want to push me i want to take them a foot farther and the reason i want to do that is to slow things down and get more control control of my body but more than anything control the steer Okay, so we're going to show you a little workout that we do. That we and I, I thank Josh and uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we talk about sponsors and stuff all the time. Uh, I'm going to say something about Jay Sparks and allowing you to be here this winter and yeah. and, and, and and giving you the opportunity to, to be on the road with us and all this stuff. And and uh, I appreciate those guys so much. But 
you know, these are the things we work on when it's off, when it's off season. And if we don't do this and, and, and it's a learning experience, I mean, you've taught me as much as I've taught you. I, I, would, I would definitely say that. So this is one of the things that I'll, I'll give Josh credit for when we were working on this stuff, and it, it, it really works. And so I want to show you how we kind of make this all happen. Okay, I've got Rob. Uh, he's going to give us a little different angle uh, of this so you can see both of us in the picture. And, and look, uh, this kind of takes, takes two people to do, okay? So we've got, you know, with, with this being the trainer, and, and he being the bulldogger, we're gonna, I'm going to kind of show you here what we do. Now, go ahead and, and, and get a little bit of tension on this. And what I do is I put my foot right here on this control strap right here, okay? Now, I've got it, and he's got, I've got a lot of pressure right here on this. I can even put more pressure if I just lift with this bungee. You can see, as you see, I'm kind of taking him out of the ground. And here's what I want you to watch. Watch what his hips do when, he, when I release this really slow and then he gets his nose and throws the steer, okay? Now, if, if you couldn't see that on, on all ends, I, I'm gonna say what he does, when he gets that nose and he pulls him out, he takes my foot and he just, want, it's almost like he's driving me through the roof, okay? And so, and now, if, if, he, if the steer was behind him, if, if the steer was right there behind him, you be the steer. That's John Mays and appreciate your help, John. All right, so John is the steer. Now, I've got him right here. I'm going to start releasing him and stick, come over him and see he's the steer. If he was the steer's hips, that steer would have hit right there. And John's, John was the steer, and when he came over him right here, John was the steer. He drove that steer right here and hit right here. Does that make sense? So that's, that's where we're at with this. Now, I can, I can change. This is what we love about this. I can change the dynamics of that steer and how he feels right here. Now, I can release. You see how he had to go in there? I just released him real quick. Okay, so, and, and let's, we're trying to create a feel. Okay, what was that create right there? What would that have, what would that have mimicked? That mimicked the steer that handles real fast, real good. A uh, one that's not gonna push you just real far, but it's gonna come over you real quick. Yeah, and that's what we want. See, because there's so many guys they can handle fast, fast handling steers because they are, they're coming over, it's no problem. Right. It's those hoggy kind of steers that really push through and don't give you that opportunity to just come over you and hit. That's the ones that don't hit real well. And that's the ones we're trying to, to make hit. I, there are several examples at the national finals this year with a couple of my guys, I would say that was just excellent for that. Tyler Wags back on a flat horn brown steer that nobody, I, nobody made him hit. And this steer just, I mean, he cleaned him up, made him hit real well. I love, I love that run. See, I pick things like that more than I do the ones that are fast. Yeah, the win the rounds and stuff. All right, so let's just go through this a couple of times and let's just let, let him work out a little bit and watch, watch, watch what his hips do. When, he, when he's driving, he's driving, there you go, and throw. And see, I mean, he's, there's always pressure. Now, I want you to do it wrong. I want, I want you guys to see and what I say wrong. I want you to do it different, okay? I want you to chase the nose this time, yep. okay? Now go, slide it, now chase the nose forward. There you go. Now see, there's, there was no pressure on that foot whatsoever. And so what happens when you chase that nose, you don't get, you don't get this. What you do is you chase the nose and you get this and you load up on your left foot. Normally when you chase the nose, he would load up on that left foot and bring the cattle back over. So, so from instead of being here to here, He's going to be from here to here to here, okay? So he's going to go from here and he's going to drive back over. Because what happened was he, he gave up his legs. If you give up your legs, the first thing you do is shift into your left leg. We never want to give up our, our right leg. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I forgot how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he said he can't do it wrong. Hey, that's a beautiful thing, right? Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Hey, the other thing I, I need to explain here, too, it's real important for you guys to understand. When we're bulldogging these steers, kind of get back in your stance again. I'm going to wear you out right quick. Get back in your stance. He's feeling the back end of the steer. I'm the back end of the steer. He's feeling the back end of the steer all the way through that right toe. Now, he drives. He never gets off that right toe. Go get your nose. He never gets off the right toe. He throws his steer. He's pushing off his right foot. Nothing, look, we never lose contact with the back end of the steer. We never lose that feel. 
There's a lot of bulldoggers that only bulldog the front end of steers. They only bulldog the front end. So everything they do is up here. Everything they do, it's all up here. There's, from here down, they forget. Their feet run together uh, because that's the training that they've gotten for years and years. I mean, I even taught it wrong for years. I mean, so the training they got was to bull off from here up. And that's what they do. That's what, that's what makes you turn. Uh, John's standing there. He's, he's, he's with us today. What's the, what's the first thing I did when you got here? Check my hips. Yeah, he was, he, was, he was sliding the steers real well. And what happened was he sliding them so well that he'd get way ahead of those steers, which I want him ahead of those steers. I want that. He was getting ahead, and, and it was felt so good to him, he just went, he'd go like this and turn and then throw the steer down. Well, why do that? Why, why even do that? Because here's the deal. You already had the steers thrown. Drive the steers back in your stance. Let them come over you like they're supposed to. And what did it do to your arms? They got loose on them. Yeah. They got away from them. He, he'd get loose on them. And, and when he started moving them steers back in his stance and just staying there, you made, he made his arms this long, you know, versus this long. If you chase with that, chase that nose, get up there and chase it if you can. <laughs> All right, chase the nose. All right, you shorten your arms right there. So I don't want to do that. That nose is out here. I don't want to chase it with my, because normally where do you catch it? Right there in your wrist. So I want to, I want to catch it in my core. I want to catch it in my core. Hey, while we're doing this, I want you to show them how you leap that shoulder forward. And this is a big thing here. We're going to do this again. Now watch what happens when I got the pressure on him. Okay, you got it? Now look, as I start to release, I'm going to release real slowly. Watch your shoulder, watch your shoulder, watch your shoulder, watch your shoulder, watch your shoulder. Now throw the steer. Boom. Beautiful work. You see the difference there? That was, that was the difference in a guy going through the horns or being behind the horns. And so... Beautiful work, and, and I'm going to tell you, I don't know how you do this without some kind of tool right. to make yourself do that because it's not, it's not natural for us when as bulldoggers to leap the shoulder through the horns. It's more natural for us to fall back. We won't stop steering. It, it's, it's so hard. If you were to just go run steers, run steers on the ground or off your horse, either way, it's so hard to simulate this repetitively to train your body, your mind, your muscles. Um, and, and really simulate what a steer is doing because things are happening too fast. And this is the, what we've found so far to be the, the best way we've found so far to simulate a steer, and whether it's a light steer that handles fast or a big strong one, yeah. and do it in a manner that we can control our body and train our body and muscles to do it correct every time. Yes, yes. I mean, I love this. And, and I love what it looks like. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and here's the thing about, here's the thing what I do. If I've got to train you in a run, it's everything's wide open. I, it's hard to train anybody in a run. Right. So you got to slow it down, and you got to create the muscle memory you're talking about, or it's not going to happen out there. And, and, and guys, these are, you know, there, there's several, couple of these drills, um, you know, that it does take a, a person to help you with to help create some of that feel. There's also a lot of these that you can do by yourself. Uh, when, when I first, I had worked out on the belt a lot on a tractor. Uh, and done some some of the stuff that Oat and Tom came up with when I was getting ready for the American, and but when it, it was weeks ago when I was by myself and had no one here, I thought you know what I'm gonna put the belt on the bungee and work out on that a little bit and just see what happens. And this is what and this created. is what we came up with. Yeah, it's great and, stuff. And uh, you know, but there's things you can do by yourself, and and when and when you have tools like that, there is no excuse for you to not improve your steer wrestling and your technique and your. Culture. So when we're using this bungee, what I use as a, as a trainer, I use this, we, it's kind of a safety card, but I, now we've, we're using it for a whole lot more than that. Uh, what I do is I put my foot right here, and as he gets down in his stance, uh, I'll feel the pressure right there. I can take and put as much pressure on him as I want to on him as far as the slide and what, what he's feeling. When I start to release this and slow down, and, and I'll release my foot up and release this bungee, it, it let, allows him to drive his hips back more, and it allows him to even get lower. And then he's when I re, totally release it, he goes to the nose. So what I, I I love the feel of that because I can tell if he gives me anything back, I can feel it through my toe, just like if he's feel he should be feeling it on his right toe. So it's kind of lets me and him work together, and it's really a cool way to do this. Uh, and he he kind of came up with this, but 
But anyhow, now we'll do it again. I'll show you. Now, this time, I'm going to kind of release him quickly. This would be a fast handling steer. I'll just go and get the nose. And that's, and see, and you see where he got his balance work? And, and this was, this is one of the things, and one of you, some of you guys that are going to critique this, you'll say, well, man, he fought, well, he kind of went over. Uh, he kind of, look, we could care less what we look like once we've got that the nose is, yeah. and pushed off that right foot. In fact, if you look at some of my guys, when they throw their steers, their legs will come, their feet will come up straight up here. I mean, it'll come straight up out of the ground, which is fine because they put everything they could on that steer and they've actually pulled that steer out. And, and not only that, is they're taking that nose and they're taking it right here. And if you saw, his head's going to the ground. He really wants his head to go the, to the dirt right there. You know, now we don't always do that in our practice sessions. I mean, we don't stick our head in the dirt every time. But that's where we're, we're, we're aiming for. Yeah. That's when we're aiming to get on this shoulder right here. And, and that's, that's a big thing. So uh, we'll go through it one more time just so you guys can watch. I'm going to release it slow this time. So that this is more... This is better practice, I think, just releasing it real slow. Now, as, as I start to release it real slow, all right, now, he's going to throw the steer. But, but let's, uh, Rob, if you would, go back to him again right there. Now, let's, I'm going to release it real slow. Now, what I want you to see is his, watch his left shoulder creeping over that steer as I start to release. Creep, 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 creep. Now, he's going over. All right, slow it down a little bit more, Josh, where they can see it a little bit more. All right, start creeping that shoulder forward, shoulder forward, shoulder forward, throw your steer right there. Yes. Now that, see, there, it, now he's recreated something for himself. And that's exactly what we want to see, see him doing. Low, lots of resistance on that steer, you know, and so the steer's not sliding anywhere. Uh, it takes a lot of the slide out. As low as he was right there, he's taking a lot of slide out. And, and low to us is where we need to work, you know. That's where we that's where we do our best. That's where we're more efficient. Right. Anything up here, we give our legs up, not good. Okay, so hopefully that that helps you as far as how you could use this in your in your bulldogging. Uh, you know, you you know we we have these that we build and and sell. Uh, I'm not. It's not a big sales deal for us. I just soon as I never made another one, but but I will do it for my guys if you need them. Uh, we'll build them, and uh, and uh, and because I think it's very necessary. Yeah, it, it, these things I keep one in my trailer. Uh, that way, if I'm on the road, uh, it's hard to go find somewhere to practice. Um, I can hook it up to the bumper of my truck or trailer, and go get some practice in and and, and work out on this for a while. But yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna show you something next, and it's kind of a bonus to what we were doing with the stick, and we're gonna we're about to show you something that's really cool and you will really get a lot out of it. Okay, for this exercise, and this goes back to the stick. We, you know, we showed you a lot of things with the stick. And this is something that I kind of created because I, and it's a test tool for me. And, and I started, actually, uh, Gavin Swallow was, uh, he had torn his pec, and we've had several pec injuries. You've had a pec injury. And, and look, we're trying to prevent some of that. We're trying to prevent those pec injuries, and we're trying to, I mean, whatever we can do to keep you out on the road more. And uh, one of the things that I can test you by is to see if you've actually got the strength in your arm that you need and that you're applying it correctly and if you're doing anything with that right arm which uh is a big thing because i mean uh, any steerist will tell you if you got a weak right arm it's it's hard to do what we do so this is one of the things now we start this off and i've just got one i, I only hook one of these bungees uh now definitely he will do more than that but i just want to start this off and do this and then i'm gonna let him show you and we call it the crab and it's kind of cool. We call it the crab. First, uh, do it with two hands to start with, okay. uh, and we'll just let him do it with two hands, and then we'll show you exactly how we do it with one. So, okay, now I've got two bungees on it, which is a lot of resistance, and I'm gonna let him crab back, crab back, stay in the stance, crab back a little bit more, a little bit more. You'll notice the ground starts giving a little bit, and, and it, you can only do as much as that ground's going to let you do, but he's going to go back. He's got all of it right there with two bungees, which is quite good. Okay, so, and the other thing you notice there, if you look at his face, the intensity of his eyes, but notice the breathing. He's pumping air. Now come forward, come forward, come forward, come forward. Now I want him crabbing back just like he's going forward because what I want him to do is I want his balance every time he walks forward to get his balance, to get his balance and then walk out of it. So, hey, everything we do, is, is to make sure that we're working on balance all the time. 
I mean, it, whether we were boxing or snow skiing or what in the world, every sport you got to have balance in your in your bulldogging or your in in the sport. So that's one of the things we're doing. All right, so that's the that's the that's one thing that we do. But here's the cool thing that we do, and this is what this is the test that I have for a guy when he comes here to see if he's using his his right arm or not, and. This was something that we just started. And I, I don't know if you came up with it or I came up, with, came it. up with it. For Gavin. For Gavin. Okay. And that's and, and it was really uh, to test his pick. And he didn't do so well when he first came. And and it kind of told me where he was as far as, as his uh, uh, recouping and, and and you know rebuilding himself. And so we had he had to kind of kind of work on that. So get back down in your stance. All right. Now put your left hand behind your back. Now. What we want to do here, if you notice, he's tucking this right arm away. Okay, so this is where we're supposed to be right here. Notice this palm out, everything right there. Now, if he did this right here, I could take that stick and pull it away real easily. If, but hand out and, and, and ball, the, ball the fist, I mean, ball the, ball the hand out like this gives him more strength to that. Now, we want to keep this tuck. Now, the, the deal here is I went back to one strap. Okay, he should be able to take this and walk right back with it. So let's crowd back, Get, keep going, go, a little more, a little more, a little more. All right, stop right there. Now, I'm going to keep him right here. Just hold right what you got. Now, see, he's, his steer is in his stance right there. Now, he's got a lot of right arm. Now, crowd forward, crowd forward. He's done this enough that he can hold that stance. And, and that's, that's hard to do when, you're, when you've got just your right arm. But you see, that also tells me that he's bulldogging with both arms. There's a lot of guys, the first thing that happens is, and, this, and why this is so critical, and, and I'll let you tell them, what happens when you do this? When you, when you let that elbow get away from you and that steer's horn float away from you, you're opening everything up right here. You're more than likely going to turn your body and let a steer's horn get by you. You're also going to probably chase the nose because now the steer's head is farther away from you than if it is right here. Also, you hear us talk about bringing that steer's head back into your stance and then bringing that nose to you. To do that, you have to keep everything tight here in order to get that steer to give you his nose. Yes, and, and I love what he was telling, telling you. And also, we want to be in front of the horns. When he's out here, he's in front of those horns. Now, anything he does right here puts him behind the head of the steer. So who's got the power right there versus who's got the power right here? And anything we can do to move you that much, even mm -hmm. this much, that steer back in that stance that much is, is so uh, important. And it may be the difference in a 4.1 second run and a 4, four second run. Yeah. And that means thousands of dollars where you're going. Yeah, it can be a lot of money, or guys, that can be the difference between going to national high school finals or not, or winning the national college finals, or uh, you yeah, know, it's a tenth just, of a second is yeah, a big deal. Absolutely. All right, so now I'm going to do two straps, and look, the, the point of doing it to where you're breaking down is you need to know where you are physically with your bulldog. You need to know what, what can I do, what, how much can I do, and also build off of that. I'm not trying to, t to, to make him show you his weakness. I'm trying to show him his strengths. Does that make sense to you? I mean, because if I show him his strengths and where he needs to work, then we can work off of that. So I want him to go to that limit to where that arm is leaking out. I mean, absolutely, where, where that, show, that, that elbow is leaking out. And when it does, stop right there. That's the most important thing. Don't just keep going back and letting your shoulder leak forward. If you will bring, that show, bring your elbow back in, hold it, and then creep back, and then, cr and then crowd back, then what you're doing is you're teaching yourself where your limits are. And before long, you'll be able to stretch. He, he's going to take this thing probably all the way out to the to the both with both bungees because he's done this so much. Now he's not just developing this. Guess what? He's developing also a lot of core strength, a lot of leg strength. Look, because he's having and he's getting on that right toe. He's feeling that steer all the way through his right toe. There's so many benefits to this. Mm -hmm. So many things that he's going to get from this. Let's go we'll do it again. All right, get low. Now crab back, crab back, balance, crab back, balance, crab back, elbow tucked, crab back, elbow tucked, crab back. The only thing that, the only thing's preventing him from going further is his this safety strap. Now go forward, go forward, balance, go forward, go forward, go forward, 
go forward and come out of it. Now, he didn't do this the first time he did no. this. <laughs> no. I promise you. You know, we've been here all winter. Uh, uh, John's sitting over on the fence. And he's, he's shaking his head, you know, when he first grabbed that thing. It was tough to get to get to where he was. He could do it and, and even get half that thing done. So I'm saying uh, it's going to test you in ways you hadn't been tested before. Right. And uh, it, it's just a beautiful little thing. And we thought we'd throw this in there as another training tool for you so that you can, you know, get better in your steer wrestling. And hopefully that, that'll go a long way in helping you to do that. Can I? Yeah. Real quick, guys, one thing, when we've shown this to other guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop it to just one bungee real quick, just so I can talk through this. One thing I've seen th guys do is they get down here and they just step back, step back, step back. Okay, which well, that's great, and you get to where you're putting some pressure on this right arm. But we can get more out of this drill if every time you take a step, Bounce. drive them hips down and back. Down step, and back. drive them hips down and back. Yes. Step, drive them hips down and back. And look. Every single time, and you can get more out of this drill than just your right arm. And look, here's, the, here's another important fact. Now, he's showing you this, and look, here's an important fact. Right here. There's an angle in this leg that we want to maintain all the way through that run. No matter where you're at and what, how, how strong that steer is, we want to maintain that. It keeps you from tearing the knees up. It also lets you allow, allows you to get on the balls of your feet, stay lower with your, your, with your stance. One thing I wanted to uh, emphasize here, too, I don't want anybody getting hurt. When we, we, uh, we, we're very cautious about what we tell people in, our, in their steer wrestling because we wouldn't want them to go out there and say, we say drive their hip. And this happened. This, this is something that will tear your legs up if you, you're not careful. And, and when we tell you to drive your hip, what we don't want you doing is this right here. You see where I'm down in my stance right here? And we drive and we, and we, and we, all we do is brace this knee right here. You see how straight that leg is right there? Anything that happens, that steer comes over you, anything that happens, your right knee is torn up. And we just don't want that to happen. So here's, here's how we do it, and it doesn't affect your right knee. It actually gives you more, some forgiveness in your legs, and we want to make sure that you're keeping the flex in those knees, that's, and it keeps the injuries from happening. So instead of going and, and, and doing this with my hips, you see where my hips went up and that knee straightened out. Instead of doing that, what we do is we drive our hips down and back. You see, the angle of my knee never changes at, at that point. So I can go as low as I want to and throw my steer and I never change that angle. So when we're practicing, we want to be low, mm -hmm. but we want that flex in them legs. That's a huge thing for us because if they're not out there rodeoing, I mean, I mean, I guess they can't make a living. And you know, Josh didn't come here to get hurt or to, uh, he came here to get stronger, not weaker. Right. So anyhow, hey, uh, I want to I want to uh, thank Josh for, I mean, he's been here with me all winter. We've had some great practice sessions, done a lot of work. It's been awesome having him here. I uh, want to thank some of our sponsors that helped my guys get up and down the road. I know Jay Sparks is big and uh, a big supporter of Josh. He's been such an instrumental uh, uh, person in getting him up and down the road. Uh, Cinch, Nutrina, Resist All. I mean, if you look around my fences, you see a lot of uh, good sponsors. And man, we really appreciate them so much and, and what they do for us and for, for, especially for my guys out there on the road. Right. Yeah, I mean, we can't do it without you guys. Uh, we thank you so much, those of you that are helping us out there. I know, like you said, Jay and Megan Sparks helped me. Neutrina keeps my horses fed. Re, uh, Redemption repairs my truck. I mean, you guys, um, it, it, this is impossible without you, and we appreciate it. And, and I got to thank Tom and Tanya Carney let me spend so much time here and train and, and Rob Pierce coming out and video so we can watch and critique and, and just keep improving every day. You bet. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Y'all have a great two, 2020 and uh, we'll see you at the national finals next year.